that is some dark lipstick today. Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna get really in the details about foundation. We're gonna talk about undertone. We're gonna talk about different application styles. We're gonna talk about color match. We're gonna get into the details today. And if you wanna see all that stuff, then just stick around. Wait a second, before we get into today's video, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. I upload a new video every Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so one of the first things that's the most important is your skin preparation. So you wanna make sure that your skin is exfoliated because if you've got a lot of dead skin, it's gonna to cling to it, it's gonna look gross, right? And you wanna make sure that your skin is moisturized. I've already done this, right? You can see this mask up here. <laughs> From like the nose down, that's a bare face. I don't have anything on. Okay, so around my nose, cause I have a lot of dryness, I'm gonna use this Embryolis. You can find this at every drugstore, at Target, everywhere. It's pretty inexpensive. It's a brand that people sleep on, man, but it's really good. So it's dermatological, recommended and tested. It's highly tolerated. It's for all skin types and it's really nice. And it's not too, too thick. It's actually pretty watery, but you get a really good, it does the job is the point. Anyway, okay, so we are good. It's a nice, smooth surface. Also, if you're into primers, now is the time to prime. Primers are great for some people, especially if you have large pores. I have large pores, but I'm still on the hunt for like the world's best primer. I'm still giving them a chance, but Mostly what's really good for me is making sure that my skin is exfoliated and moisturized. For the sake of this demo, I'm gonna use my kit. I'm using my mud colors. So this is foundation palette number one. This is mostly cooler tones, pinker tones. And then this is foundation palette number two. These are much deeper for my skin tone, but there is some olive tones here, much warmer. Here's the thing, when you're fair skinned especially, your instinct is to just go to like the palest color. That's not always what you need, okay? So I'll show you what happens when you do that. When you're trying to find the right color match for your foundation, where you wanna test it is right here. Your skin here is typically less discolored than let's say your nose or around your cheek or on your chin. This is where a lot of redness happens. So it doesn't make sense to color match your skin here because then your whole face is gonna be pink. That's not what you want. You don't ever wanna match colors to your hand. Your hand is not ever gonna be the same color as the rest of your body. It's just not a thing. Let's try a color match. I need a brush. Okay. So first, I'm gonna pull too light. So here, this color is very, very white. It's too white. It's not gonna work. Ooh, obviously that is far too dark for me. That is wrong. We're getting closer. See, it's more yellow, but it's maybe too yellow. So I think what I wanna try to do is split the difference between the lightness here and the tone and the undertone of this. So this light color, is more cool toned and then this color here is a little more yellow we're gonna mix them together and see what we get well it's still too light so I think what we need to do is neutralize it so my skin undertone is pretty it's like a true neutral I might appear pretty pink on camera but I really am sort of like yellowish in person but I'm not like a true olive because the ginge. So let me find a cool and a warm together and see where we get. You can't even see where I put it on. That's a perfect color match. You want your foundation to disappear. That's the point. Now, when you mix up the color or you've selected the color from the bottle at whatever store you're shopping at, when you put it on your skin, here, it should disappear, but when you put it on your skin here in the areas that are discolored, that's where you're gonna see it, okay? So when you put it on, it might, you know, take you a second to be like, whoa, that's kind of dark, or whoa, that's kind of light. You're evening out your skin tone, and that's the point of foundation. So let me mix this up, and we'll apply. I'm gonna use this beauty blender for half of my face, and then I'm gonna use a brush for the other half, just so you can see the difference. So my preference, it just kind of depends on the formula that I'm working with, and I'll get into formula in a little bit, but sometimes a sponge is better, a damp sponge, and then sometimes a brush is better, you know? It's just kind of 
you figure it out what works best for what formula for what degree of coverage that you're looking for because sometimes this really does make a difference where you want to put the most color is where you need the most help so where's the most discolored part of your face around the central area and see it looks you know crazy like I've painted my face look at the color blend it's blended down and it matches my neck perfectly this is like a super high coverage foundation because it's professional. The most product should be in the center of your face and as you blend out, there should be less and less on the outer edges. If your fingers are giving you the finish that you are looking for and that works best for you, then use your fingers. Nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that your hands are clean. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use a foundation brush for the other side. And the kind of foundation brush that I'm gonna use is, this is by Morphe. This is the Morphe M439 brush. It's densely packed, but it's got a rounder top. And first I'm gonna tap the color on and then very lightly buff. If you have dry skin patches, sometimes this can be a micro exfoliator, like your skin will be perfectly prepped and then as soon as you start swirling around in here, you're disturbing the skin and it's a problem. With this, you just kind of are patting it on so it might be a little better for you. But my Clarisonic foundation brush is the jam and I love it. Something is tickling around my nose. I'm trying to itch it with my brush. If I were to like wipe my finger across my face right now, I would be wiping off the formula that's on top of my skin. So to help it stay in place, you need a setting powder. And for this purpose today, I'm just gonna use my good old Cody Airspun. You can use any translucent powder that you like. You can use a pressed powder. You can use a powder with color in it. Just be careful because you could muddy and disturb your foundation. Before you set with the powder, you wanna make sure that you've smoothed out the lines because if you set the lines with the powder, then you are setting the line and it will be there forever. I'm just gonna use a brush today and I am patting. So once your foundation is set with powder, then you can go back in with any of your other powder products like powder highlighters, powder blush, and bronzer. So I'm gonna finish up my face and I'll be right back. Okay, so when you are matching your foundation, the color that you land on does more than just even out your skin tone. If you are using a color that's too light, it can make your skin look dry and chalky and not nice. And then if you select a color that's too orangey or too deep for your skin tone, it can look muddy and dirty and like a weird, it's just weird, it's bad news, don't do that. So your undertone is your intrinsic skin color. So that means that's like your, your base note. So there's olive, which is yellow, warm, golden, and then there's ruddy, which is cooler, pinker tones. More like ham versus cheese. Is that <laughs> strange to think about? And then your shade is the lightness or darkness of your shade. If your foundation shade is lighter, that means that there's less color. And if your foundation shade is darker, that means there's more color. Not pigment, I mean like shade. So how do you know what your undertone is? What's your intrinsic color? Are you a warm, are you a cool, or you are, are neutral, like you're an in-between? So Stephanie Nicole has a really great video where she gets really into the weeds about how you can use the veins on your wrist. And really, if, if you have the time, you should sit down and watch the video because it's really, it really gets into the details and you'll learn a lot. So if your veins are blue, then you are more cool toned. If your veins are green, you are more warm toned. And if they're a mix, then you're more neutral. So when you're shopping for foundation, it's usually marked warm, cool or neutral and warm is like golden green right cool is pink blue veins and neutral is both if you're especially diligent with your SPF you're gonna have a major color difference between here and the rest of your body so you might even need to involve your chest you might need to involve your shoulder a little bit um, just play with it sometimes you got to get your arms in there just to make sure that you're getting the full picture because there's nothing worse than your head belonging to someone else's body, right? So wear time with foundation. How do you know what is gonna last the longest on your skin? Well, first of all, you need to understand your skin. Is it oily? Is it dry? Is it combination? Is it mature skin? Is it like perfect youthful skin? I hate you, get out of here. 
How long do you need to wear it? Are you gonna be on camera? Is there gonna be a flash photography? Like there's so many elements to this, but just for the regular Jane, the basics are the different formulas, right? So there's the cream foundation, which is silicone, wax-based. It's typically for stage. What I'm wearing today is a cream formula, so it's like, no joke. This will last like 10 to 12 hours of color. So what that means is that the color is just not gonna disappear into thin air. That sometimes happens, right? It just fades away and all of a sudden your skin is peeking through. Liquids last the least. Those are typically silicone or water-based. They have a lot of times the least amount of pigment. Dual finishes, meaning like it goes on liquid and dries to a powder finish. Those will wear maybe a little bit longer than just liquid because they've got a little bit more pigment in them. Powder is 100% pigment, so it will wear the longest. That's why after you apply a cream or a liquid or a dual finish foundation, you can set it with a powder to extend that wear time. What about the numbering system? What's NW20? What is R something else? What I have found is that there's MAC, and then there's pretty much everything else. MAC foundations are designed by artists for artists. So it's with the idea that you already understand color theory and the color wheel. So it's helpful to think that with MAC formulas in particular, N means not. Okay, so when you're looking at the bottle and it says NC, whatever the number, that means not cool 30. So what's inside the bottle is not cool, it's warm. So if you have a cool skin tone and you're trying to balance it out to neutral, you would pair it with not cool. Does that make sense? To cancel out to get to the middle? I know it's confusing. And then the numbers are sequential from light to dark. So they start with 15 and then they go up to 55. So 15 is the lightest shade, 55 is the darkest shade. So NW15 is the lightest, not warm. So what's inside the bottle is gonna be like a pinky tone. Does that make sense? With pretty much every other makeup brand, and I, I'm sure that I'm missing a couple, you can tell me in the comments below, but what the description is of the bottle is what's inside the bottle. So I'm just trying to match my skin tone. So I'm trying to shop for something that's more neutral. So I'm looking for N something. I know it's overwhelming. I totally get it. The best thing that you can do is try to get color matched. Go to a counter, see a professional, get samples. If you go to Sephora, you can get samples of anything for free, as many samples as you want. And then you can take them home, go out into the daylight, color match yourself in the right area, and then make your decision from there. The drugstore doesn't really give you that option, okay? I get it. What you can do is you can go to foundation.com. It's this amazing website. If you have a couple different foundations that you know work for you, you put in those parameters, so the brand, the line, and the color selection, and then it goes into this magical computer, and then it will tell you like, 10, 20, 30 recommendations of all different brands and it tells you which color you are based on the information from the other brands that you input. It's amazing and it works and it will save you a lot of money. It's not only high-end products, it's drugstore products too. Okay, I know that's a lot to take in. It's a lot of information. If you want me to get more specific on any one of these particular topics, let me know in the comments below and we can do a more specialized video. Thank you so much for hanging out today and for watching this video. You can follow me on all the socials. If you like this video and you wanna see more like this, you can hit the notification bell, you can hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Is that lifting, God damn it! Oof, there's a hair. It is tickling me. Look, is... That, that fucking hair is back. Pretty sure. Something is tickling me and I don't like it. Every Thursday on... <laughs> this hair is gonna drive me insane. Where is it?